Facebook, you live now. Call recording off. This call is being recorded. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome, everyone, to the God in Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition, and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest Sea Church in Harvest, Alabama. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all your blessings, Lord. We thank you for allowing us to come together this day, this your beautiful day. This is a day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. So as always, Lord, we give you all the glory and we give you all of the praise. Bless us now as we get ready to study your Sunday school lesson. Anoint afresh, dear Lord, uh, all of us, the, even me as the speaker and those who are listening, anoint us afresh that we might receive a word from you and that we not just be hearers of your word, but that we be doers of your word. We plead the blood over this technology, over the, the conference call technology, over the Facebook technology and all of that stuff, Lord, all this stuff going on. We just plead the blood of Jesus and we plead the blood of Jesus over every household represented on this call and on this broadcast and those that are going to be listening to it in the future. Lord, we plead your blood. You know what we stand in the need of. You know what the desires of our heart are. And Lord, we declare and decree that you are a God of promise and you will keep your promise. So we thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, our lesson this morning is a is one of those kind of deep lessons, if you will. Uh, Paul is, is, is in the midst of discussing an argument uh, of... Uh, He's given this this argument to try to help these people in Galatia uh, to understand that that you you are free, you are not bounded by anyone, and and what what Paul wanted them to understand, you used to be in bondage, but now you've been set free, stay free, and so if you will, I put a tag on this on this text to say now you know, stay free. And some of you may say, what are you talking about? Now you know, stay free. Once you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, once you have heard the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ about his death, his burial, and his resurrection, then the truth, the word of God says, the truth shall set you free. That sets you free from the bondage of sin, from the bondage of slavery. Now, now understand, understand, you say, well, I... I I, I I ain't never been no slave. Well, you might have been slave to, to drugs and alcohol. You might have been slave to, to a promiscuous, wild living. You might have been bonded in, in somebody's sex ring or, or even yourself being caught up in all of that kind of stuff. And, and what he's saying is you've been set free from that once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And being that you've been set free, Stay free, stay free. Well, now, now let's get down into the theology of this. That, that's, I wanted to make sure I pulled that out right off the top because people need to understand that once we, we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, he's doing an awesome work in our lives to keep us free, to set us free from whatever sin's penalty, it's, it's, it's power, it's position, all of that stuff, God is setting us free from that. It's a progressive thing of sanctification that happens over and over and over again as long as we come confessing him as and telling him we have sinned and fallen short. But we're not really dealing with all of that in this text. See, Paul, Paul's got a problem. He says, I'm dealing with this Galatian church and they are acting like they want to go back and do what they used to do. And I'm like, whoa, 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 Paul says, let's stop all of that. We, you know better. And once you know better, you ought to do better. So, so let's read the text so we can get a greater understanding. I'm going to read it in part. 
Galatians chapter 4, and we're going to start with verse 8 and read down to 11, because I just, I want to make sure we digest this just a little bit, little bite at a time. He says then, but then indeed, you, when you did not know God, you serve those which by nature are not gods. But now, after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and and beggar and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage? And he says, You observe days and months and seasons. I'm afraid for you, lest I have labored for you in vain. What Paul is saying is that the Galatians have now been deceived. They have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But now there are these guys that's coming around called Judaizers. These guys are trying to convince uh, the Galatians that they ought to go back and serve this Jewish tradition, uh, Jewish rituals that uh, uh, that all of the Jewish people have been following in order to be a great Christian or a good Christian. Let me let me let me make this plain. Let me make this plain. Let me back off a little bit. So so here we have here we have Paul. Uh, been going around preaching all these Gentiles. Gentiles are non-Jewish people. And all of these Gentiles all over the known world at that time were accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They were believing in his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Paul was a sign and an apostle to preach to the Gentiles. Even after he was the one who used to be a Pharisee and he used to go around persecuting those of the church. And then he got knocked off of his horse and God picked him up, turned him around and placed his feet on solid ground, gave him a vision to preach to the, to the, to the uh, Gentiles. So after he started doing this and people became saved, they accepted Jesus Christ, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, he finally got an opportunity to go back to Jerusalem and sit down with what was called at that point the Jerusalem Council. The Jerusalem Council at that point in time sat down and had a conversation and they made a decision that 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 the that the Gentiles did not have to follow the Jewish traditions of circumcision. They didn't have to observe all the Jewish holidays and all that kind of stuff. They all, you know, they had certain things that they couldn't do, but the main thing that they had to do was accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So that's what God uh, had wanted them to do, and, and, and that's and that's the fulfillment of, of really what we're supposed to do as Christians. And these are simple things. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and soul and love thy neighbor as thyself. That is the only law that we have to follow. If we love God with all our heart and soul and love our neighbor as ourselves, we have fulfilled of the law by doing this. But these Judaizers, they did not agree with the Jerusalem Council. Many believe that they were former Pharisees and, 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 and Pharisees, you remember, Jesus had a hard time with those boys. He had a hard time with them because what they really wanted, they really wanted the people to follow them and worship them because they were living the right life. They were doing it the right way. And that's, that was the stuff that they were dealing with. And so what these Judaizers were doing Everywhere that Paul went, they came behind him like haters. They came behind him with innuendos, trying to convince the people to leave what Paul was saying and to accept what they were saying. And the bad part about this was, is that why were they doing it? Was it to the glory of God? No. They were trying to put the people under their control. And that's where it really gets to us today. In today's society, we got too many folks tell you to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, accept him, 
as, as, as your Lord and Savior, and you receive him as your Lord and Savior, and you receive the power of the Holy Spirit, and you got all of this, and then these people, pastors, want to put you under their control. And they say, well, you've got to be under authority. And I don't have no problem with people being under authority. That, 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 that's a choice that you can make. But don't trick me and don't try to persuade me to be under your control. Because I'm going to be honest with you. We call them Judaizers in this text because that's what the, what, but I mean, to me, that ain't nothing but witchcraft. And then from somebody from, from the street, I'm going to just say it. That ain't nothing but pimping. Oh, yeah, I said it. Yep, I said it. And that's that's the problem that we have. In today's church, we got too many folks trying to control people and pimping people. And then we even got a country that's going through that mess. Well, folks just want to pimp somebody. Oh, hallelujah. I'm just trying to teach the lesson here. <laughs> so, so, so the, the, the Galatians were, 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 were under a deception and Paul was trying to help them understand, look, man, you ain't got to be the, under this deception. You ain't got to be under these people's control. Listen, listen, listen. Let me, let, me, let me come at you from another standpoint. Let me come at you from another standpoint. That's what Paul says. I'm, let's go back to when you first believed. And that, that's, that's, that's basically what he was saying. Let's, let's go back to when you first believed. Listen to verses 12 through 15. Brethren, he says, I urge you to become like me for I, I became like you. You, you. you have not injured me at all. You know that because of physical infirmities, I preached the gospel to you at the first. And my trials, which was in my flesh, you did not despise or reject. But you received me as an angel of God, even as Jesus or Christ Jesus. What then was the blessing you enjoy? For I bear you witness that if possible, you would have plucked your eyes, your own eyes, and gave them to me. The Galatians had been deceived by these Judaizers. But Paul now, after giving them that strong argument that they shouldn't go back and do all that bondage and all that mess, he says, let me talk to you because I remember when you first received the gospel. And Paul is saying, I came in town and I preached God's word to you. And when I preached God's word to you, I was injured myself. I was going through some physical maladies. Now, 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 affirmities. Now, some have said, well, what is these affirmities Paul is talking about? Well, some believe that he might have had malaria. You know, he did all this traveling around and he might have got malaria. And then and, and malaria affects you in many and multitudes of ways. He had fever. He was sick. He was probably throwing up this, that, and the other. And then in the midst of all of this, they, some have said, well, well, maybe he had eye problems. And malaria can cause your eyes to look like they popping out of your head and all of that kind of stuff. You know, so, so. We don't know what his problem was, but whatever it was, he was sick. And while he was sick, he still preached the Gospels to the Galatians, to the Galatians. He still preached. Oh, what am I saying to you? We can't let nothing stop us from spreading the gospel of the good news of Jesus Christ. Even if we're down and out, we still got to praise his name and share with somebody what the Lord has done for us. And so 
Paul says, even in the midst of my trials, even in the midst of my tribulations, you did not reject me, but you received me. And matter of fact, the way that you received me, you treated me as if I was an angel or even Jesus Christ himself wouldn't have got a better reception from you guys. And he's like, wow. And, and, and you got to understand as a preacher and as a minister, when you hear, when you, when you, when you preach into somebody or teaching somebody and they receive the word of God and you see them in the spirit receiving that which you're giving out, you get excited on the inside. I mean, you just bubble on the inside because you, you believe someone that just came to Christ or someone has just been delivered from something and, and you're excited about all of that. And that's how Paul was. He was excited when they received him that way. And the joy he had. Because it looked as though they understood the word completely. And I believe they did. Just like Paul, I believe that they, they had really accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I believe they believed the gospel and his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And, they, and I believe all of that was going on. But then, it's just like us today. Soon as we get something good, they're always going to be naysayers. That's what the Bible calls them. We call them haters. I mean, they'll try to tell you, if you go buy a new shirt, they'll say, oh, that's a nice shirt. Hmm. You know, if you go buy a new dress or, or get your hair done or something like that, oh, yeah, mm-hmm, you changing styles again. You know, you got people who always try to, see what you going through or have, and they will try to make it like it is wrong, like it ain't right. And I'm like, and, and it's like, wow, what, what is their problem? And then you got people who always trying to sway you towards their way of thinking. And I'm like this, you already know what the word of God says. We are saved by grace. And that through faith in Jesus Christ. Let me say that again. We are saved by grace. And that is through faith in Jesus Christ. We're not saved by our works. We're not saved by our actions. We're not saved by the fact that we manifest anything. We can't be adding anything to the gospel other than it is, a, it is God's grace. It's his favor. It's his favor free gift to us and all we have to do is believe and we receive we got to have faith in him and we receive it that's it now once you become saved once you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior oh yeah you got some things that you can do but you don't add nothing to your salvation your salvation is secure in Christ Jesus and so Paul he says, y'all didn't receive the gospel. I know they trying to deceive y'all. But but can, can I give my own? He says, Paul wants to do an expression. He, he, wants to, he wants to really tell them how he is feeling about them. Listen to verses 16 through 20. Have I therefore became your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. They, they, they zealously court you. And, but, but for no good. Yes, they want to exclude you. That you may be zealous for them. But it is good to be zealous in, in, a, in a good thing always. Not only when I am present with you. My little children, from whom I labored in birth again until Christ is formed in you, I would like to be present with you now and change my tone 
for I have doubts about you. Paul, Paul said, wait a minute, y'all. These, 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 these guys have tried to came in and they have tried to make me your enemy. And then here I am trying to tell you what is right because I'm the one that brought the gospel to you in the first place. And some of you thinking I'm being so hard then I'm, I must be your enemy. No, 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 no. That ain't, that's not what's going on. The, 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 the false teachers, they are so eager to win your favor, but their intentions are not good. Let me, let me, let me break this thing down from, from a, from a nowadays you got people that are coming to tell you, well, you know that teacher you about to take, that teacher ain't no good. She this, that, and the other, or he that's that, and the other. And you be walking around confused and don't want to go to that teacher's class. Or they might tell you your coworker, so-and-so, that works over in this department, they ain't no good. And you ain't never met these people. Because they got something against them and they trying to get you swaying upon their side. Are you in the church? And so and so's auxiliary always doing good and you admire their auxiliary, but so and so over here's auxiliary or committee, you know, you associate with them and they say, well, you don't want to be over there with that group and you don't want to be dealing with them because she's so and so and so or he's so and so and so. Oh, man, stop listening to that mess. We grown folks that he say, she say mess. We're grown and we're free to make our own choices. We're free to make our own decisions. And the truth is what set us free. So don't get caught up in these false teachers who intend you no good. All they're trying to do is shut up Paul. That's what he said. Paul said, all these folks are trying to do is shut me up. If they could shut me up, then they can, they'll happy. Then they'll go on about their business. They won't even be worrying about you no more. They won't pay no more attention to you. Have you ever seen these kind of people around you? They come in and stir up mess, and once they done stirred up the mess, they going on out the door. Pastors, we have to deal with this all the time. People come in your church just to stir up mess. And then after they stir it up, they mess, they gone. Paul was saying that's what these Judaizers were doing. They were just running around stirring up mess. And they have a tendency of doing that, just going around stirring up mess. Well, I've done pretty good this morning in dealing with this lesson. I, I'm trying to keep it short. But it, 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 it's got some powerful stuff in it. So, so what, is, what do I want you to gain from all of this that we've talked about? Well, follow Jesus brings true freedom. That, that's important. And, and, and we don't have to earn freedom in Christ by following people's rules and regulations. We have this free gift of his love. By just believing in him always. That's what this is all about. And so. With this. We need to understand. That. If we want to truly be free in Christ. Then he alone. Must be the focus of our trust. When we look back. At these Galatians. In their situations, they got attracted or distracted by people telling them that you ought to come and follow these Jewish laws, be circumcised and all that. What, what, was, what was so attractive about all of this? Well, it's hard to follow. An unseen God. But that's, that's what this is all about. The just shall live by faith. 
And faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So don't get caught up trying to follow a man or woman's rule to say that you have faith. Follow Jesus, the one you can't see. And then realize that Jesus loves you. He chose us first. He loved us first. And because he chose us and because he loves us, we ought to choose him and love him. If you got to choose between man and God, always choose God. If you got to choose between a real God named Jesus who died on the cross, choose him. Don't go and choose a false God, an idol. And you know what our false gods are right now in this world. Money, number one. Ooh, ooh. Then you got people who go after power. Ooh. Position and prestige, fame and fortune. All of these are idols. Choose God. Choose the Lord Jesus Christ. And I tell you, you will not be disappointed. Nope, never. So let's make Jesus the most important thing in our lives. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we now know that in the past we had false gods and other people have their religious beliefs and traditions. We know, God, that none of that saves us. It's only your death, your burial, and your resurrection that saves us. It is your free gift. By grace and through faith in Jesus do we receive salvation. Now that we know, Lord, your word tells us the truth shall set us free. Help us to stay free, God. Help us to stay free in you, free to choose you, God, and we choose you right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Help us to make the choices, the right choices, by choosing you in every step that we take and every move that we make. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Before I close the Facebook and the recording, uh, we always like to pray the prayer of salvation for those that are listening. Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I invite you to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You prayed that prayer and truly believe it in your heart. You are now saved. For those on Facebook, we're going to close this session and you can go back and listen to it in its entirety. Um, but we're also going to be on overtime on our conference call line where we can have a discussion some have some questions, some thoughts they want to add to the lesson. Our conference call number is uh, 910. That's the area code, 910. Then 218-0531. And we'll be on the conference call having discussions in overtime. Thank you to those of you who are on Facebook with us. Be blessed and always be a blessing. And we'll see you next Sunday. May God bless you and keep you on Facebook. Bye-bye.